Good. Um, hi, guys. Again, um, uh, welcome to our sort of short um, 20th EMAS anniversary um, interview round or whatever you call it. Um, the very first question of mine would be if you could just give um, us or the audience a very brief presentation of who you are, where you're based and what is your EMAS story. That would be that would be just lovely. Mm -hmm. Do you want someone to start? You can start, Sergio. That would be cool. <laughs> oh, okay. Great. Well, I'm uh, Sergio, um, Sergio Paramo. I, uh, I'm originally from Mexico, but I'm living in the Netherlands at the moment. I'm working as a lecturer in social entrepreneurship in Maastricht uh, University. And I attended um, the first uh, MS training school in Glasgow. I think it was 2015, and it was the first time I, I, <clears throat> I met uh, the MS members. And at that time, I remember I didn't know uh, anyone else in my university that uh, was doing research on social enterprise. And I was feeling a little bit uh, lonely, to be honest. And then uh, after I, I, I went to Glasgow, uh, things started to change uh, in terms of uh, <clears throat> knowing that uh, there were other people in other universities and in other countries in Europe, mainly, but also uh, abroad that were doing research similar to mine. And uh, it was a very great experience. And uh, from there on, I started attending pretty much almost every event of MS. Uh, so MS conferences and MS uh, training schools. And from that on, then I, um, I received an email, uh, I remember like three years ago to someone interested in participating as a PhD representative. I sent an email and then I suddenly was participating for the position and I unexpectedly, I won it. And then I, I was, I became a MS PhD representative of MS. And it was a, a, an amazing experience. Um, I can give you more details about that, but sort of saying I started, uh, I, be, I, I knew MS when I was uh, starting my PhD and I ended with my PhD being MS representative. And at the moment, well, I'm not a PhD anymore, uh, but I still feel very close uh, to MS and the community. So that's my story. Helene, would you like to have a go? Yes, like this we go also chronologically. <laughs> so uh, my name is Colin Serre. Um, I'm a postdoc researcher at the Erasmus University of Rotterdam. I first heard of MS because I did my PhD in Belgium, which is where MS started. Um, I mean, I, I did my PhD in Brussels, but uh, we have a lot of connections, Belgium being a very small country. Um, so I went to my first MS conference in Sheffield. I don't remember the year, maybe 2019. Um, and 2018, sorry. 2018. 2018. So a long time ago already. <laughs> and uh, there I met all of you. Uh, which was uh, really nice. And it was not my first conference in management, but it was definitely the one that I liked the most. The atmosphere was so friendly and everything was nice. Everyone talked about topics that I really cared about. You know, we had uh, great, great uh, academic talks, but also social talks and uh, evening and evenings. Um, and there, there was an announcement for being a, a PhD rep uh, at the board and I, I applied. And then I was a PhD representative for a year and a half, so right before Sergio, and right after Eduardo. Um, so it was it was really an amazing experience also to see how an academic network works, um, what really people care about, and I it really made me see that MS was run by really nice people, and because of these nice core people on the board. It made all of this conference so nice to attend and so PhD student friendly as well, which I think is something very important and sometimes forgotten in bigger networks. Um, so this was really nice. And um, I stopped being a PhD rep uh, um, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, and I was I still attended the MS conference and I'm very happy to be still involved in MS because uh, my research team is organizing the next MS conference in Rotterdam. Nice. Good. Eduardo? Me? Okay. <clears throat> so um, I'm Eduardo Pereira. I am uh, originally from Brazil, but I'm based in France. 
I did my PhD in um, Catholic University of Lille. And I am now starting a new job as a startup manager and a SEC. Uh, and um, my first conference was also the same one as Sergio in 2016. Uh, in, uh, it was in Louvain-la-Neuve. Yeah, yeah, Louvain-la-Neuve. And it was quite interesting because also like in the department that I used to work at the faculty, we only had uh, two people working on social entrepreneurship, but like really different subjects actually. So it was really hard actually to, to engage into different discussions and also to have like the support. Uh, and I remember that also the first conference, conference I went with a colleague from work and actually she was uh, at the network, the, uh, the, the conference before. So she, I, I got the chance to meet like a lot of people because she kind of introduced me to a lot of people and it was quite nice the environment the whole synergies that everyone is kind of like really really how can I say like really friendly like Colleen said like uh, the, the, this idea of really PhD friendly where you can talk with everyone was really amazing for me to see that people like really on a high level researcher could talk to you and just have like a coffee or whatever that was amazing uh, and actually, that was the conference where uh, we had uh, Francesca and Beledetta that were the previous uh, PhD representatives, and, uh, and they decided to select a new one. At the time, it was quite informal, so uh, we haven't had like any any like structure on the on the on the selection. So it's kind of like, hey, I want to be, and then like everyone was kind of pointing out to the person who would be the the PhD representative. I was the chosen one and I stayed for a year and a half or two, I guess, uh, actually for the, for, for the two conferences. So it was uh, between 2016 and 2018. Uh, it was a great experience actually. I, I, I kind of looking back, I, I, re do not, I wouldn't say regret, but actually I think that for us as a PhD, when we start to be a PhD representative and also when we get to know the, the, the network, we do not understand the dimension of the resources that we can have with MS. And actually we understand kind of in the end. So I regret that do not like asking more opinions, asking for more like uh, discussions to create this kind of like a uh, group that we have nowadays. And also that was the idea that I had uh, when, uh, Ros Rossi was amazing because Rossi would just said like, uh, you have like a white card, do you whatever you want, because like, uh, this is your community. You have to create something that makes sense for you. So I just said like, why not we create like a group of PhDs and then we can have like more things and not like concent con con concentrate this on only one person. And that was kind of like the idea of engaging more people. And then like until 2018, the conference in Sheffield was the moment that we all gathered together. So yeah, that was the moment where I said, I think that like we, we, we have something to do and we have like amazing people that we can gather together and create this kind of like a emerging network of PhDs and not only like the, the MS. And uh, yeah, this is my story, I guess. I really want to tie to what you guys just said, because um, you basically, of course, reflected on your own experience yeah. and the way you lived through it. But what is ultimately, do you think, what is the significance or how significantly do you think the EMAS is in supporting the PhD slash early career researchers? Of course, it is the conversation about ideally, I think it should be this, but also, you know, my experience was this. So basically, how did it help you maybe, but what do you think are the most sort of important or significant parts of it? Why is EMA so important for the PhDs and early careers, in your opinion? Maybe I can jump in. Um, so if you, so first, I think you have two, two answers to this question or two sides of an answer. First, of course, you have the academic answer where everyone, we all work on social enterprises and community action. And um, we, it, it provides us a network of people working on the same topics where we can really exchange and that we very often lack in our own universities because it's still, um, I mean, it's a, it's a booming top topic, but maybe five, six years ago, we were maybe only one or two in each department. So of course we, it gives us this kind of support and also international uh, network. But more importantly for me, MS is a network that gives a voice to PhD students and um, that makes them understand that um, 
you know, that gives them a real space in the academic community. That, that doesn't just treat them as students, but treat them as full academics, even though they started their PhD six months ago. And I, I remember when I was on the board, the very first day, the very first board meeting, I was so intimidated. I was so happy Eduardo was with me. <laughs> and um, and I, I didn't dare talking or anything. And then I really, like, they really made me feel comfortable. And uh, I, I noticed really, I really understood quickly that I could contribute to any kind of discussion, you know, even though it had nothing to do with the PhD community, nothing to do with me, a call for paper on, on, on you know, a project for some kind of action, my, my feedback was always welcome and things like this. So I think they really give a voice to PhD students and they make them belong to the academic community. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Yeah. If, if I could just add just a tiny thing also, but I, I don't know, I have the, the impression that doing a PhD is hard also, like it's not also, it's like hard, dot, you know? And the point of having like this community and also like you said, Colleen, having this like, uh, having friendly uh, revisions or discussions and not being like uh, going to a conference and, and just being criticized again and again and again and seeing that you'll be criticized, but also there is like the whole support behind that we're gonna do, do try to help you to restructure or whatever. And I think that this is really interesting. And this is what makes MS MS, I guess. This is actually what I, my impression of the, the, the whole network also. Yeah, yeah I would like to, to contribute on, on, on those same lines, I think. For me, uh, beyond the support, um, it also helped me to, um, to expand my view of what you can do as a researcher. Uh, the field, if you see it from your own seat in your isolated space in your uh, university, you may not be aware of so many things going on at the same time. And what I like about MS is that it's very interdisciplinary. And you also have members coming from different fields and you, in a way, uh, organically get embedded into other views about social enterprises and things that are connected to the same issue, but are not exactly social enterprise. And at the same time, to start create, start creating a, a broader view of the field. And then, of course, you 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 can establish their networks and establish uh, connections. And then from there, it's like a, a very uh, <clears throat> healthy space to establish healthy connections where uh, you are the only one that can de determine how far you want to get or how far you want to go on that. So for me, start as a PhD, I, I felt the same like Polina and Eduardo, like I was afraid of uh, how, how can I talk to these other people? And then as more events you go and as, uh, the more you know the people in MS, you start feeling more comfortable. And then you start realizing that actually everyone is more, more or less like you. And then then from there you start establish networks and of professional people but also friends and that's also something that no. is something very special from ms that uh, i have friends now from ms beyond colleagues so that's also another dimension perhaps not very academic but is personally important when you are doing a phd to have friends Thank you, guys. I completely concur. Everything you said absolutely resonates with me. Um, I think that uh, in order to keep it short and sweet, um, the very last but the most important question would be, what would you be your birthday wishes to the EMS on this 20th anniversary? What, what would you imagine if we are sending this video in a capsule for the future or whether, you know, the entire board will look at this message? What would you wish the network on this birthday? I think I would wish them to keep existing for a very long time, not necessarily to grow, because I think they have a perfect size that makes them who they are and makes their core identity, just to keep going, keep doing the good, work, the good and important work they do, keep involving PhD students, keep involving senior researchers and making these connections. So basically just stay the same for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I, I would say oh. that uh, um, for me, um, it would be similar, very similar to Colleen. Uh, although I, I wish in the future 
the MS could uh, perhaps maintain the same spirit, but start uh, um, bringing people also from other latitudes uh, uh, that it, cur it currently does. I know it's, it's difficult because they'll become a global network then, but I think it's important that we hear voices from everywhere. And I would say to keep the same spirit, but try to bring other PhDs or charting ball PhDs from, from more far away uh, in the periphery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eduardo, anything <laughs> to add to this? Well, I, I agree with both of you. I, I, I don't know how can I add that to this. I agree that I, I, I wish that MS also keep the size because I think it's really important to have like this amount of people not becoming like a huge conference that you don't know like the person. Because yeah. uh, again, what makes MS MS is basically like this friendly environment that you that you can like reach everyone. Yeah. Um, I wish uh, that in the future, in, from year to twenty years, that maybe like uh, from uh, day one, uh, some uh, young researchers know more about MS and trying to engage more in these communities. And uh, I wish also that the senior researchers, they keep like the support with the younger researchers because this is what makes the whole difference of, uh, of, uh, of actually like, uh, a researcher, like someone that wants you to engage into, into the academia. That's very fair. Thank you very much. That was really good. That was amazing. Um, I think that was actually all the questions. As I promised, it would be short and sweet. Thank you guys very much. Thank you for being here. And look what a wonderful cohort of PhD representatives mm -hmm. does EMAS have. Look at that. Thank you very much.